The highly anticipated One Piece live action series has finally hit Netflix and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this is the best anime live action adaptation that has ever come out. I'm thoroughly enjoying it from the costumes, the sets, the action, and I'm absolutely in love with the cast and in one in particular. But I did have one question while watching the very first episode. Who the heck is this guy? In the very first episode of the One Piece live action, we get a scene where Zoro is being pursued by a man named Mr. Seven, who tries to recruit Zoro for Baroque works. But in order to answer question number one, we need to answer question number two. Who the heck is Baroque works? Or better yet, what is Baroque works? In the One Piece world, the world government and the marines have allied with seven very powerful pirates known as the Seven Warlords of the Sea. And actually, in episode 5 of the live action, Helmeppo gives Kobe a very good description of who the Seven Warlords are. And yes, it does seem a bit counterintuitive, but essentially, the Seven Warlords act as government agents and it gives them the immunity to pretty much do whatever they want, legally or illegally. And as Gart puts it, it's because it's a complicated world. One of these Seven Warlords of the Sea is Sir Crocodile. <laughs> And Sir Crocodile creates a secret organization called Baroque Works. And the reason Crocodile created Baroque Works was to overthrow the government within the nation of Alabasta. And we are not going to get into it too deep into Baroque Works, just the surface level stuff. But one thing I will mention is the naming convention of Baroque Works. The male agents within Baroque Works are referred to as Mr. with a number attached to it. And the lower that number is, the more dangerous of an agent that you are. For instance, Mr. 12, Mr. 11, Mr. 7, Mr. 1. You get it. The female agents are given holiday and weekday code names. For instance, Mrs. Monday, Miss Valentine's Day, etc. In the anime and manga, we do get to see a Mr. Seven. However, the one we get to see is not this Mr. Seven, it's this Mr. Seven. The Mr. Seven we get is some goofy looking sniper guy in the manga and anime, while in the live action, we get this really interesting red haired mohawk looking guy. But did they just change this character and go completely off the rails? No. After the first episode, I knew immediately I was going to respect the details and references to the original source material. The Mr. Seven we get in the live action is actually mentioned in the One Piece manga and the anime. And the only thing we know about him is this reference picture. That's it, a reference picture. So how Baroque work works is when somebody within the organization dies or leaves the organization for whatever reason, they're just replaced with a new member. So for instance, if Mr. Seven dies, he's just replaced with another new Mr. Seven. And that's exactly what happens here, and it's even referenced in the manga and anime. Zoro just cuts this guy down, literally, and this Mr. Seven is his replacement, and that's the one we get to see in the manga and anime. So I get it, it does seem they were just adding some random character and going off the rails a little bit, no. Oda would never. The live action just dug a little bit deeper and gave us some extra facts that don't really affect the world of One Piece in any way. But on the other hand, we get a little bit more information. And who knows, Zoro might have actually cut down and murdered a whole bunch of Baroque members for all we know. So there you guys have it. What seems to be some random weird red-headed mohawk guy actually ended up being a legit person within the world of One Piece. But anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I actually love the live action One Piece adaptation. I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you guys are fans of this kind of content, please feel free to like and subscribe. But until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one.